Hi, welcome to my channel, Swearing in the Dark, Learning the Art of Astrophotography. In this video, I'd like to show you some beginner telescopes, my beginner telescopes. Uh, just walk you through the basic designs and uh, show you my progression all the way up to where I am now with astrophotography. So, please, check this out. start with uh, my very first telescope. It's what a lot of people know as a traditional telescope. It's called a refractor. Uh, that means there's no mirror. It's just a straight through set of lenses. Um, I've got this. I received this for free probably 20 or so years ago. Um, it's what most people find in like, uh, you know, used stores, hobby shops, uh, department stores, even, you know, 300, 400 times magnification. As soon as you see that, basically walk away. Um, Magnification is judged by your eyepieces. So, anyhow, uh, this is my first telescope. It was actually uh, pretty much a Tasco clone from the late 60s. Uh, believe it or not, Sears stopped selling these, I think, in 1968. So, uh, this actually is the first telescope. It's not good for much except decoration right now, but uh, I'll just say it's uh, very small optics, um, a real shaky mount that uh, you really, really got to learn patience to, to see anything, especially if you focus, everything vibrates for, <laughs> seems to be forever. So you got your target, you go to focus it, you know, a lot of times you end up losing it. Um, back in the day, this was supposed to be some kind of mechanism to, uh, to track. I never could figure it out. I just essentially loosened things up and pointed it and tightened it and hoped for the best. Um, this is what they call an alt as mount. I believe that's altitude azimuth. Um, it's, uh, it's, again, what people know as a traditional telescope, but uh, honestly, the small aperture, the shaky mount, and even the uh, eyepieces, they're not even the standard uh, these days as inch and a quarter diameter eyepieces. Uh, this, I believe, is 0.965 or something. So there's a lot of things going against this telescope, but for many people like myself, this is uh, what started it all, because uh, I'll never forget the first time I saw Jupiter and started learning the sky and actually found Saturn. And a lot of people, that's the, the wow moment when they just, wow, I really want to see something like that again. So anyway, I wouldn't recommend this telescope for anybody. Um, it, definitely not for astrophotography. There's no tracking or anything like that. So honestly, if you see something like this, even for free, I'd suggest you stay away from it. It's just uh, too, frustra too frustrating to operate and figure out. Uh, this is what they call a hobby killer. And I can honestly speak from experience. I felt like throwing it a few times. So... Uh, I don't use this now it's just for decoration, but again, that's about all it's good for. So, uh, moving on next, I'll show you one step up from this. It's a different type of tube design and also a bit, bit better quality mount. Stay tuned. Next, we have uh, a couple of, couple of improvements over the previous telescope. Uh, this is um, sort of like a high-end uh, department store telescope. It's got a few things that set it apart from the other uh, beginner department store telescope. Uh, for one, the other one was a refractor. As I said, that lens is all the way through. This is what they call a reflector. So uh, instead of a bunch of lenses, it's a, a mirror down in the bottom. And there's another mirror, secondary here, primary and secondary mirror. This is where you put your eyepieces. So again, this is a reflector type of telescope. Uh, usually a little more aperture for, for bang for the buck, basically. Um, this also has got a different mount. Uh, you can see the tripod is definitely a lot more sturdier than that... Uh, that spindly wooden one from the 60s. Um, so to start, uh, we've got a better tube, we've got a better tripod, and also this is uh, an early version of an equatorial mount. Uh, once you get the hang of this, line it up, 
you can actually follow things through the sky. You get to punch in, uh, not punch in, but set uh, the location of certain objects, and it's actually not a bad way to find it. Myself, I've never used a, a manual equatorial mount. I went right to the go-to uh, computer and hand controller and whatnot. Makes it real easy to find stuff once you get the hang of it. Uh, this one, as I said, there's no tracking, but it does have these manual controls, so if you get everything lined up and dialed in, uh, you can actually follow stuff. Um, this isn't my telescope per se, it's uh, neighbors down the road, I'm sort of refurbishing it and fixing a few things. The, uh, the sight guide scope bracket is broken, but I have another one. Anyway, doing a little work on it. Again, this is um, definitely a step up. You'll get a lot better views with this, mainly because of the, the bigger aperture. That's where I'd say with a reflector, you get a, a real good bang for the buck. Um, this Bushnell, there's a lot of companies that make telescopes very similar to this. Uh, this will do inch and a quarter eyepieces. Um, some telescopes, you could actually go up to two inch eyepieces, which uh, essentially it'll really open your eyes the difference. You get some good, good quality two inch eyepieces. But um, if you see something like this, let's say a Goodwill or anything like that, for, uh, for a decent price, you know, 50 bucks or less or something. Might have been 150 new, but um, either way, this is, uh, this is going to provide a lot better views and a lot more satisfaction than that previous one. Again, the equatorial mount will be able to track things through the sky at night. So that's, uh, that's a good department store telescope. Uh, next coming up be my real telescope. Uh, hold on a sec. Hello again. Uh, this is what I call my first real telescope. Uh, this is called a Dobsonian mount, and that's basically due to the, uh, the swivel and the, and the hinges on the bottom there. Um, this thing, the price was quite reasonable. I think 15 years ago I paid $300 for it used, which, uh, believe it or not, they're still about the same price. Maybe a bit more expensive, brand new, but uh, either way, this has been such a great scope. I've, I've kept it. And, Honestly, if I'm out imaging, a lot of times I'll just grab this quick, set it on the lawn. Because I keep in the garage, the temperature is pretty much the same as outside all the time. But for a grab-and-go telescope, around the house anyway, this is, uh, this is phenomenal. Not too big, not too small. Um, a lot of people suggest starting out with the Dobsonian, and I, I totally agree. For uh, the bang for the buck for aperture, you really, really can't go wrong. Uh, even a 6-inch is a little smaller than this. These things are called light buckets for a reason, because... Uh, even a 12 inch is, you know, less than a thousand bucks, maybe around a thousand bucks. That's a lot of aperture to let a lot of light in, which basically means more detail. Um, can't really do astrophotography with any of these telescopes I've showed you. There's a lot of people doing things with uh, a good, good quality cell phone, get a cell phone holder right up to the eyepiece. It's a whole different ball game. I really don't want to talk about it because uh, it's not what I do. I do astrophotography. Uh, as for observing though, this is, uh, you can't go wrong with a Dobsonian. Um, as I said, I've had this quite a while. It started to rust out about five years ago, so I basically totally stripped everything down. Took the mirror, both mirrors, primary, the secondary out, focuser, painted the tube, and uh, you know cleaned everything up real good. And uh, as it is pretty much unchanged, I uh, snugged up the focuser a bit, did a little DIY pro project there. But uh, again. This, uh, there's no tracking, makes it not ideal for photography, but the idea is when you're looking through this eyepiece, uh, you learn once things start moving through your uh, field of view, uh, essentially just give it a little nudge this way or that way. So if this being non-computerized or anything like that, uh, it's really good for a lot of people, you know, looking through a telescope for the first time. They don't have to worry about setting anything up, essentially just find what you want in the finder look through the eyepiece and uh, you're often observing and I can say the moon planets really really look phenomenal with the, the aperture again it's a light bucket so um, a good starter scope and in fact one that was my starter scope and I, I'm still uh, still using it pretty much every time I'm doing observing uh, this is a good first starter scope again uh, not for photography the next one coming up is ideal for photography but you cannot go wrong if uh, you see a Dobsonian. You got to learn how to line up the mirrors. It's not really a difficult thing. It's called collimating, but um, I mean it's very simple to learn. Even a uh, few different ways to do it. YouTube videos everywhere will help you out. But again, uh, you can't go wrong with a Dobsonian. I swear by it. This I think made in China about 20 or 25 years ago, but the quality was pretty good, and uh, I don't think I'll ever part with this. Be right back.
Hello again. This is uh, this is where I am now in the state of astrophotography. Uh, this is actually a type of reflector telescope as well. It's uh, I'll get more on that later. This mount is what's really important. This is uh, an equatorial mount, similar to the one I showed you earlier, except this is computerized. It's got uh, servo motors and whatnot, and uh, essentially it uh, it finds things for me in the sky. Punch in with the hand handset here, hand controller and it'll, uh, it'll follow them through the sky. Through the There's a Skywatcher, it's a brand HEQ5 Pro, and uh, it's a good starter intermediate mount. And um, again, I have one out in uh, my observatory on a pier. This one I like for grab and go. If I say I want to go on vacation or anything, I can take this with me for uh, you know portability. It's actually not bad. I have a case for the scope and whatnot. Um, Back to this design, it's a type of reflector uh, engineered by a company called Explorer Scientific. Great uh, after-sales service, but anyway, this was designed with David H. Levy, Canadian that uh, found a bunch of comets and got named after him. Anyway, they call this a comet hunter. So this is not just a reflector like the other telescope. This one actually, uh, it's a hybrid telescope. It's a Mac Newt. Maxitov Newtonian. The Newtonian being uh, the mirror-based telescope reflector, uh, similar to the last two I showed you, except this has a corrector plate up front. Sort of takes care of some of the uh, the weird things that happen with a mirror. Coma is a big one, uh, you know, I, I forget the words, but either way, I'm not too scientific about it. Uh, so this is uh, my first telescope I bought with this mount, and uh, great for observing and whatnot. I found it a little tricky to use for photography. Again, uh, it needs to be collimated like any other reflector telescope, and the collimation uh, just doesn't seem to stay with this one. So, you know, I've got to be a perfectionist when I'm doing the astrophotography. With this, it's just one extra step that I really don't need to do every night is check my collimation, and it's almost always out. If the temperature is 5 or 10 degrees from the previous night, I can pretty much guarantee that it's got to be set up again. Even though it's made of carbon fiber, it's supposed to be a you know, very diff little heatage or shrinkage expansion from, uh, from the, the changing temperatures. Uh, it's just, so either way, this is going to be retired for visual only. It's, uh, it's an interesting rig to, uh, to operate. Essentially, uh, I've got the hand controller here, but I also control the one out in the observatory with the computer. So this one, essentially, just power it up. Um, I have a GPS module down there stuck to the leg. I believe you can see it. Uh, doesn't work too good inside, but either way, um, this automatically gives all the information to the mount. It gives you The mount tells where your location is, which your, your daylight savings time is enabled or not, uh, how far we are. GMT, we are eastern, where I'm making this from. Um, bottom line, your location and everything, all your coordinates, Having the GPS module saves you a lot of hassles. If, uh, if your telescope has that option, that availability, plugs in the bottom of the handset, I strongly suggest it. And spend 10, 15 minutes entering the information in. And then if you move somewhere or go somewhere over the weekend, you've got to punch in that location uh, if it's far enough away. So either way, the GPS module can plug this into a computer and uh, it guides, it's got a 30 pound capacity. This is where the intermediate part comes in. I'm just about to the point where I'm almost gonna have to uh, go to a heavier mount if I go any bigger with a scope out in the observatory. Uh, my mount is close to maxed out now, maxed out being about two thirds of the capacity. Uh, when you're doing astrophotography, sometimes even that's a little far. So I'm about half, as, uh, a little past half capacity out there, which people say is a limit. Anyway, um, that's essentially a bunch of beginner telescopes that progress right from the Sears refractor all the way up to uh, getting into the, the big leagues with the German equatorial mount. Um, another thing to point out too, uh, makes this thing uh, a lot easier to align. You've got to align this with Polaris at the beginning of the night, every time you set it up at least. So there's a telescope in here and you set the uh, tube a certain way and uh, essentially once you get Polaris in there, it's a bit of a technique and a process, but essentially you're lined up to the north star, to the uh, rotational axis of the Earth, and so that helps the mount figure out where it is and how to track stuff through the sky. It's uh, even for observing, it's really the way to go, an equatorial mount. So I hope I've uh, clarified some beginner telescopes, my beginner telescopes, uh, with, with you people. Uh, there's, uh, there's pros and cons to pretty much every design, and hopefully I've, uh, I've shown you what to stay away from and uh, perhaps uh, help narrow down your hobby, which way you want to go in this. 
if anybody's thinking of getting a new telescope, I strongly urge you to contact your local astronomy club. And uh, everybody has different uh, desires out of astronomy, what you want to look at. Some are happy with planets and the moon. Other people want to get into uh, deep sky observing even. Um, so the different telescopes are good at certain things and not so good at other things. Really, it's best to talk to somebody rather than just uh, pick up something you saw on sale. Seriously, if you see something at the Goodwill or any of these, uh, you know, secondhand hawk shops or something, uh, unless it's a, a, a good model, a good design that somebody has given up for whatever reason, you know, those things that are 15, 25 bucks department store telescopes, they are there for a reason because people just got fed up with them. So. Uh, resist the urge to go cheap. Uh, as I say, good scopes aren't cheap and cheap scopes aren't good. So you really, uh, you really got to be careful where you spend your money. And uh, if it looks too good to be true, chances are it probably is. So uh, thanks again for watching and uh, please visit my website, google the blue marble observatory.com and uh, keep looking up. Clear skies.